are going to bring it to you now. Interior CS, Dr. Fred Matiangi, ICT CS, Joe Mushero, and AG are set to appear before senators to appraise them on National Integrated Integ Identity Management System, also known as NIMS, popularly uh, known as Huduma Number at Senate Chambers. Let's cross over live and listen in. If you go to comparable jurisdictions or even mature jurisdictions, Mr. Chairman, you know that protection of personal data is sacrosanct. You cannot, through a miscellaneous amendment, start collecting people's DNA without protecting the data and without telling us to what extent it can be used. So as you consider adjourning these proceedings, we must get an undertaking from the CAS that they spend this exercise until we come to the bottom of all this and until we have a legislation to protect the privacy and personal data of Kenyans. I've never had in my life a miscellaneous amendment bringing such a far-reaching legislation. Okay. Thank you. Senator Wako. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to add on to what uh, uh, Honorable Senator has said, uh, because if this exercise continues uh, with the request that uh, the CAS has already made, then um, our request has no meaning. And when we already know that this pilot exercise, in fact, two days ago, we saw it in the uh, papers that um, uh, this pilot pro pro project is beginning in Marsabit. And we are so concerned. We are, personally, I'm concerned because I am from Marsabit. And putting even this season into consideration, whereby most of the pastoralists uh, are now, have even moved. You know, we, we move from one place to the other, and it is a dry season, and others have even gone closer to the border of Kenya and Ethiopia. So when this exercise begins in Marsabit, of all the places in Marsabit, I wonder the motive behind. So we need, if, if we are postponing, then let us stop the entire program to begin. Mm -hmm. uh, let me hear from the chair of ICT. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I too would like to concur with it, my fellow colleagues. <clears throat> First and foremost, I'm very dismayed that we don't have the uh, um, ICT CS here today. This um, act has far reaching consequences to the people of Kenya. And the fact under Article 31 of the Constitution, you know, the act, uh, the right to privacy is paramount. We have not yet enacted the Data Protection Act. So today, Kenyans are extremely vulnerable uh, if we allow this process to proceed. So although, um, of course, it's in your docket, Mr. Chair, on what you will uh, decide, but I too like to concur with the two, my two colleagues that until that certain time, we put a hold to this process. Thank you. Uh, Senator Mahmoud, Chair, Chair of Finance. Chair, this is a, a very weighty matter. I do concur also with uh, the colleagues who spoke before me. I think this country has been registering people since independence. And this is a major shift from what has been happening before. And uh, a program like this should actually have taken, should have taken a lot of due care so that no Kenyans are informed and the proper information. We are told that this program, first of all, the way it's starting, because it's starting from, uh, you know, a state chiefs, I think it's very, very complicated the way it is done. It's shrouded in a lot of uh, mystery. Uh, the ministries have been invited. I think uh, the time given was inadequate because uh, normally a question which is uh, asked in any House of Parliament should be given the priority it deserves. On the minimum, maybe the CS should have appeared today at least to ask for more time, at least to understand what the issues are. But now my good friend, 
who was with us in Parliament, in the 11th Parliament, is saying, asking for two weeks. I think two weeks is just too long. But as said by my colleagues, I think this program must be suspended. A lot of evil things are being done by way of amendments, of uh, statute law amendments, uh, Michigan Amendment Bill. This is a very sub substantive law. <coughs> substantive program should not actually should come through that. So I think uh, I concur that this matter be suspended and the ministry's concerned appear before this, uh, okay. this Senate uh, as soon as possible, I think. Okay. Um, Justice, we'll come to the question. Uh, but let me hear Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, okay. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, uh, I agree. I'm not, a very... <laughs> I'm not yet a speaker. <laughs> you know, chair. you are on the chair. So, chair. yeah, committee. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair uh, of Security. You never know the future. Uh, what I want to, to agree that uh, these are very serious matter. I would have expected out of courtesy and respect to the House Board Cabinet Secretaries to appear to, because they are serious matter to request for more time. I appreciate my friend CS uh, for the good work he's, uh, work he's doing. But this is a very serious matter. As I, I want to agree with colleagues that uh, this thing that has been brought through miscellaneous application, uh, this is a very serious matter that will affect over 50 uh, legislations that will need to be, uh, to be brought in place. We are talking about uh, uh, the collection of biodata, the information, sensitive information of Kenyans that are being collected. Uh, we are aware uh, the ministry has ensured that this thing is done through secrecy. I have seen your peers uh, of Interior Karanja Kibicho uh, going to Citizen Radio. He has been in Citizen TV trying to explain to Kenyans. But I thought the right forum is to use the representatives of the people because this thing has been surrounded in secrecy. Uh, two things is that uh, even as the pilot program is ongoing uh, across selected regions, and uh, I've seen that you intend to carry out this between March and April, a massive creation of Uduma uh, number. Uh, I would wish that uh, the representatives of the people, which is the Senate and the National Assembly, be at the forefront of knowing what is really happening. But Mr. Chairman, uh, we request that the, the ministry's concern and the government uh, should suspend forthwith uh, this exercise because it infringes to the rights of Kenyans uh, without uh, a due regard to right to privacy. And although we appreciate that there are many issues, it is because of national security we appreciate what you are doing to ensure that we are safe. But that one should not be a, an avenue to abuse our basic human rights. And therefore, Mr. Chairman, I request that this exercise be suspended forthwith until proper consultations is done and public participation is also done so that Kenyans can be part of this problem. The, the sacrosanct of Article 10 on the public of, of participation should be taken into, uh, into, into, into fact, uh, um, uh, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Senator uh, Kirinyaga. Ah, uh, thank you, Chairman. Now that you invited us to be friends of the committee, you allow us to make the comments that you would probably make. Actually, and one of the issues that I want to say is I find it contemptuous the reasons the CAS is giving for not being prepared to come. These, these are not historical issues. These are issues that, you are dis that are being discussed currently. I have heard somebody saying the PS is always in the news trying to explain to Kenyans what is going on. So what was so difficult in just getting the information and coming, even if you are given a few hours, you should be able to come and explain, because it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing uh, uh, exercise. So Chairman, I think you need to treat the reasons being given with the content that they deserve. I think um, we are generally saying the same thing, isn't it? Uh, Senator Kisi, maybe? You have something different, Nomi. Let us hear Senator Ungeri first, then we shall come to you. Thank you, Chair. One of the things that I tread and uh, I shy away from is when one wants to reveal the biodata of individuals. And from a medical standpoint, it's an area that will be described as a no-go zone because confidentiality of documents is so critical and so important. I appreciate and I understand where 
the ministries may be coming from in terms of the security of this nation. But I think a law like this coming under the Omnibus Miscellaneous Amendment Bill is unacceptable. If you look at the other jurisdictions, it's quite clear. They have been able to go through a raft of laws to be able to secure their own uh, data, biodata, for their own citizens. Right from the word go, these are the representatives of the people. I was in a function over the weekend at home, and one of the questions are being asked is, Senator, what is going on? What can you advise us on this matter? It becomes very difficult to explain to the ordinary person what the bio data or, uh, in, uh, uh, implications are. And therefore, Chair, any personal data, be it financial, be it medical, be it whatever it is, is data that needs to be protected through a series of laws. We may eventually get there, but we want a substantive bill and a proposal to the two houses to be able to go through Important in order to carry this process forward. Thank you. Majority Leader, Deputy. Thank you, Chair, and uh, our brother CS. Um, first, let me say that uh, the objective and the purpose of uh, NIMIS, from my point of view, especially harmonizing. Uh, the registration document is something that is really very important. Because you will find today that you are running with the birth certificate, you are running with passport, you are running with ID, you are running with a driving license. To harmonize that under one data is critical. It's really important. But having said that, uh, there are pertinent issues that have been raised, especially that touches on the right of citizens in this country, which we really need to look into. For example, uh, places like Northern Kenya, we are already having challenges with the current mm -hmm. programs in terms of registration of persons. Because you will find that kids even taking two, three years to get their identity card. But if we introduce this harmonized system, I'm sure it will be, it is going to take a longer period. And I don't know how you are going to handle that. Yes, we can give the CAS and the ministry extension, but I think from my point of view, we should not give more than one week. And again, I think it's important for this process to be halted until those pertinent issues are resolved. I thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody of a contrary opinion? Any? I, I said I wanted yes, to speak. Senator Shionga, then yes, uh, as, Wambua, a, as a friend. Then Aaron, then I'll make a determination. Thank you, Chair. Also if you call a ICT. friend, a friend must talk. Yeah? Just a minute. Can Thank you. you. For a minute. Thank you so much, uh, CS, for coming. Uh, I'm looking at a, <coughs> a similar uh, issue, but in a different way. Already the, info, the, the collection of data has started. The pilot has started. When you come to talk to this committee or whoever that will represent, let him come with the format, how, the formula, how you arrived at the 15 uh, counties that are participating. Let us get it, because this house is part of the information, is, is seeking for the information that 
of and unveiling why the the, the, info, the, the the collection and the collection of this information is taking place. So when you come, tell us the criteria on how you arrived on the 15 and not and not the others. Thank Two, you. Mm -hmm. just another thing. Two, when you look at the information, we have so many information, even me here, I have given so much as far as my life is concerned. Why then go and look for specific again? Do you have a motive, a, a different motive behind anything? Thank you so much. I think, I, I, think, I think in terms of the substantive questions to this issue, we leave that for the meeting. Mm. Right now, we are, we are just agreeing on the procedural issues and what to do until they come back. Uh, Senator Wambua, then uh, Thank you, Chair. Uh, for the record, Chair, I also want to register my disappointment that the Minister uh, could not uh, find time and reason uh, to appear before the Committee of the Whole. Having registered my disappointment, Mr. Chair, I want to say that this Senate is already seized of a bill on data protection. All right, and that's the Senate there sitting in and deliberating and debating on the names registration uh, that has already begun in 15 counties. And of course, questions being raised as to one, how the 15 counties were settled on, and two, how secure is your data? Once the government gets that data into one uh, file, what is now being called the Huduma number, how safe is it? But of course, there's also the argument of uh, the fact that the government already has so much data on you. Why do they even need to do this? They already have most of your details, uh, should that need be. So it's time for us to wind up Morning Express, but I'm going to leave you with the proceedings at the Senate. But from me and Morning Express, we want to say thank you for watching. Do have yourselves a great day. Do take care of yourselves and each other. We'll go back now to the Senate. Number one, the legal basis that formed is, is basically uh, a miscellaneous amendment that is suspect. The contract itself was so non-transparent that we have, we're wondering why the speed with which this happened without any transparency in terms of the contractual framework that, that is guiding this process, but most importantly, the rights issues, the rights of the data subjects. Yes. The rights of the data subjects are being infringed upon. We as legislators are representatives of these people, but we ourselves are data subjects as well, and we don't know the quality of, we don't know even what's being collected, and even this house, was not presented to NIMS for us to then at least know that the data subjects will be protected according to what is their right. So I think for those reasons, this should be stopped and this information uh, uh, immediately, actually. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, Senator Aaron Chiriot. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Chairman, you can see that. Uh, my fears were not unfounded. If anything, the manner in which uh, this house is being treated on this issue tells you that there's more than meets the eye. The reason why we are not being given answers, in my opinion, I want to believe is that somebody knows that if these answers were to be brought to fore, then uh, there'll be a lot of trouble. Some of the questions that I asked uh, Buona CAS much as the minister was not, in, uh, was not able to come, and for reasons that uh, have been earlier on explained, what was so difficult in revealing to us, for example, the name of the contractors or the companies that have been uh, contracted to undertake this exercise, how they were brought uh, on board, what is the budget of this exercise, what is the emergency? That's why, w w what emergency are we addressing for us to undertake uh, this exercise that is shrouded in mystery and all these kind of things. Therefore, uh, Chairperson, I want to humbly request that you give firm instructions that we suspend this exercise until the day that the ministry shall feel they are ready to come and engage this house. This is one of the two houses of parliament. We are the house that allocates uh, resources to national government. If you look at the BPS that we shall be voting on later on today, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is the single ministry with the highest allocation than any other ministry. Yet the contempt with which they treat parliament and do not want 
to engage us on issues of national importance tells you that there is something that is being, that something is not uh, right about this whole exercise. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, I want to agree with my colleagues who are saying that until such a time as a minister will find time to come and address uh, the concerns, because when this House speaks, it speaks on behalf of the 45 million Kenyans. So Kenyans are telling you this morning that Ministry of Interior, you cannot go on with this Huduma number business until you get the approval of Kenyans through their representatives in this house. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. I think I think uh, we need to make determination of uh, of this issue. I know, right. Senator uh, Majority Whip, you want to add something? It's okay. Also, Senator Langat, because I think we're expressing the same sentiments, yeah. and I, and I need to be very clear. When I see yes. First of all, uh, we, uh, you will not answer any of the questions asked um, because I think this matter must be treated with the seriousness it deserves. The Constitution is very clear. Article 125, 1 says, either House of Parliament and any of its committees has power to summon any person to appear before it for the purpose of giving evidence or providing information. Two, for the purpose of that clause, the House of Parliament and any of its committees has the same powers as the High Court to enforce the attendance of witnesses and examine them on oath, affirmation, or otherwise, to compel the production of documents, and to issue a commission or request to examine a witness, even um, abroad. Article 153 on the responsibility and accountability of the Cabinet is also very clear. 153.1 says that decision by cabinet shall be in writing. Two says that cabinet secretary is accountable individually and collectively to the president for the exercise of their powers and the performance of their functions. And three says a cabinet secretary shall attend before a committee of the National Assembly of the Senate when required by the committee and answer any question concerning a matter for which cabinet secretary is responsible. It cannot be that before you, you have more than 30 senators that the Senate in plenary, the Speaker gave a determination that this meeting be held by the Cabinet Secretary. According to us, the communication and the information was with you by the 22nd, because that is when the letter was, was dispatched. This looks like a delaying tactic, such as we say, oh, let's meet next week or the other week. Yet, as we're doing that, the process and the reason for which we have invited you is going on. If you look at, uh, you know, if you, if you listen to radio this morning, the principal secretary of interior is a radio citizen, but he cannot come to talk to 30 senators of the Republic of Kenya. The office of the attorney general is saying, no, we have a meeting at 10, state of judiciary, which we're all also attending. This meeting was at 8. Senators have been here from 7 a.m. Kenyans are concerned about these issues. So I want to direct as follows. Number one, we shall not get responses from the CAS. We will now demand as the House that the following be summoned to appear on the 11th of March. Cabinet Secretary Interior, Cabinet Secretary ICT in person. 11th. Yeah, Monday the 11th at 8 a.m. In person. Cabinet Secretary Interior, Cabinet Secretary of ICT, the Attorney General. And in fact, in that meeting now, we shall invite all other interested parties on, on this matter. Finally, the Senate. You know here there is an entire, this is more than quorum. The only thing missing is the mace, because we also have people in the speaker's panel. So we're determining until then that this process be suspended, until that discussion is held with the Senate. If you would like to do it earlier, if you're available tomorrow, we will meet and you will go on. If you're available on Saturday or on Sunday or on Monday, we will sit down and discuss it. But until then, this entire business, because the issues we are talking about, you know, the data is still being collected. Whether it is DNA, it is still being collected. So until then, the Senate determines, so directed that that matter be suspended until your colleagues find it worthy or worth their while to come and be accountable to the Senate of the Republic of Kenya. Meeting is adjourned.